Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We'd like to welcome uh, the public and other folks that are either part of the district uh, that will be uh, joining us uh, <coughs> virtually. Uh, my name is E. Fulton, and you are now uh, in the uh, Budget, Finance, and Growth Committee. And if our member, Mr. Messer, our Vice President, will uh, lead us in the pledge, we will begin. All right. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. Attendance? Do anything about attendance? We have uh, Mrs. Bates maybe joining us virtually a little bit later. Uh, and today we're having sort of a super deep, kind of uh, meeting, but with limited uh, topics, but all essential and important to get covered. And this is a result of last month's meeting, where we decided we wanted to do a little bit less of the routine monthly efforts and actually focus on some things as we move ahead uh, regarding uh, growth and transportation and enrollment to get a better handle on all of that. Before we begin, I do have a couple of updates real quickly. Uh, one, um, Today in City Council, uh, City Council member uh, Betsy Sunderman uh, proposed uh, a motion, a resolution to request information about how CPS had spent or was spending and planning on spending the COVID uh, dollars that we received with the Recovery Act and all that associated, which would be for those several years. Uh, initially, we thought it was a follow-up to a transportation issue. But uh, come to find out, it really was a request to know all of our uh, decisions. Um, she made the motion and did not get a second. So we do not need to proceed. Uh, but I'm sure it's something that will surface again somewhere along the line. You're talking about this resolution? So we won't post it because it didn't really happen. The other piece we've had a request. Uh, from and we really appreciate the folks in the community that apprised us of it and uh, did the initial research. Yes, sir. Um, I mean, isn't it weird that they you could just do a public records request? Exactly. Or, or just look on our website. Because <laughs> we or have, I mean, really interesting. You could have been on a thousand meetings we had on the topic. Yes. Right? Or a thousand and one. Well, we had a lot. The plan is on our website as required by the federal. Absolutely. And she's. Been apprised of that now. Oh but gosh. I was somewhat gratified that there wasn't a second to the yeah. discussion. Only two council members, I believe, had any comments about it. Uh, we're glad that she's interested in that. We're proud of how we are spending and plan to spend our money. Um, but uh, but that was kind of interesting. And that also leads us to the fact that I think they are expect, expecting our attendance again. I don't even know if it's next week or the following week at the Budget and Finance Council meeting to see what if there's been any progress, both in the implementation, but also in the relationship between ourselves, SORTA, and Metro. So we probably, that will be a topic, obviously, today. The second thing that has come up in a, with Mr. Messer's approval, um, our wonderful director of, of preschool, Bear Brooks, who, who also serves as sort of our liaison with the Course Development Committee, has asked us to, to give some guidance regarding the role and responsibility of the Workforce Development Committee. I would like to, it's not a big deal, and if using the internal auditor is not meaning that this is a big issue, but uh, I'd like to just refer the, and it seems to be a simple request as to what's allowable and what isn't allowable according to the, the board adopted charter for the Workforce Development Committee. So I. With your approval, Mr. Messer, just send it to the internal order. I know she's on vacation right now, but when she returns, are you able to relay that message, Treasurer? So, so it would be an assignment. Yeah, when we get to the end of the meeting, and I'm not sure how we end it, but yeah. just to try to get it moved along. So, what would she be specifically doing? She'd have to read the charter. For the, workforce the workforce development yes, committee. for the workforce development committee, which is a, really a committee that we created right. in, uh, in association with our, our CFT, particularly. 
uh, and Leso asked me, and then she'd just have to say what's allowable or not. There's some confusion, as I understand it, on the workforce committee, how much they can be, as a governing body, involved with the actual in-service and training. I think that's they're confusing some roles, possibly. Yeah. I was I was confused from the get go with that too, <laughs> on that one. So it's an easy one to get confused. It's so bizarre because you all did the committee, but the budget resides. In. Yeah, it's so weird. Quite strange. I think that was one of our many I'll ways that we all made it all happen. And it's not that's moving forward to, to begin something. It makes sense. Keep everybody happy, but then moving forward, it's difficult to implement. It was initially probably a good gesture on the part of everybody. Well, let's um, let's proceed and adjust a little bit. I know we have the mighty mighty sharks have to compete. <laughs> and, um, win. Win. Um, win. And let's uh, just to make some adjustments. We took care of those two items. Uh, Stay. There's not anything else I came across later. Is there? And what's on the agenda? Was it just those two things? All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, Let's, can we start with uh, the transportation debrief? It's number one, and it's uh, so important, especially as we are in preparation for, um, uh, you know, a, a handing off of the baton, but more particularly as we prepare for whatever additional dialogues and pressures and lobbying and testimony or whatever we're going to have to give as we continue our discussion with Metro. So without further ado, I'm just going to give a sorry. quick, yeah, just a, a quick right. update. Um, on Wednesday, September 8th, I made a personal phone call to Metro CEO to arrange and uh, uh, reconvene um, the original group that we had. So it was um, their board members, our board members. Um, and he did pick up. We had a conversation. He said, he was willing to meet and he would send me the dates, possible dates, that evening. On the 10th, since I didn't hear from him, I um, wrote an email on, and that was Friday. And so he responded on the 13th that Monday and stated um, why, what will be on, what's on the agenda. And I said, it's a follow up from the council on restoration of extra services. And that has been the last communication, was Monday the 13th. I have forwarded um, Ms. Walton, you, you the email so you can see um, the conversation as the chair of the Budget Finance and Growth Committee. Um, so at this point, I have not heard um, from the CEO. Um, he, the last thing he shared was he was going to try to get dates from his board. Sir, um, thank you, um, Superintendent. Do you have you gotten? You know, I'd asked that question uh, in one of the meetings. Like, do we know the answer if they're legally able to provide them? Like, do we have that answer yet? And I wondered if maybe it would be good to engage um, our government government affairs people mm -hmm. um, to track down Secretary of Transportation, not the not Mr. Buttigieg, but there's the one that I used to work with that person in that seat back when the Believe in Cincinnati. So they're much more accessible. Maybe, like, so if they're the ones who sent the letter, can we understand if that has any teeth to it and maybe ask them to come and give us the standing? Because what I'm hearing in the community is they're not even legally required, and I feel like I think some people think they are. So if we can run that to the ground, and then a couple council members have asked if I've heard anything, and they've not reported they can't or they can. Required to do what specifically? The, well, they there is uh, they communicated in the meeting we were in that they mm -hmm. got a letter that you can't do routes that are not open to the general public. Yes. And they're not willing to do the wink, wink, nod, nod, and say, well, they're open, we just, because the drivers just didn't stop. That's why they were so efficient. They didn't do all the stops. <clears throat> if that's true, 
there's not a whole lot we can do to get them, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then I think that's why I think we have to look at the alternatives, like, do we do something for the seventh and eighth graders? But until we get that answer, like, how hard can we push them? Mm -hmm. um, because I think in the same thing, uh, if you just Google bus driver shortage, it's a nation, no, nationwide right. thing. In all aspects of busing, it was like, what was the, there was a, a thing from the State House News. It was like 90% of school districts in, that, that have busing in the state of Ohio are uh, short drivers. So, I mean, that, that I think we have to face the facts on that one. There's much bigger things from a pay standpoint, whatever, that is going to be required that I don't even think they're talking about right now. So before we can force that, we need them to agree that they need to still do this and that there's nothing preventing them. So then we can go forward. Because my other concern is I also know two other districts have requested that if CPS gets special service in Hamilton County, since we have the shared, they want it too. So it's completely confused the thing. I just don't want to be constantly asking for something and, you know, it makes us look foolish if, A, legally, we can't be asking for that. B, if we ask for that, now there's this many. Now there's three districts. It's going to be unmanageable to do it that big. So, I mean, I think it's, it's very, it's important to fight for a district. We also have to look at the big picture. I think the way it was set up with extra services, it is legal. So basically, their extra route, the community pretty much elected. They know it's school time. They didn't really get on those routes. So as far as what's legal, legally we can ask for the restoration of routes because that, that was legal. Um, so we're not asking for dedicated routes, which is very different where the public so does not have access to the bus. So that's not... Um, what we're asking for, and that's, that was not in place. What I learned from the bus drivers mm -hmm. is, you know, it was, yeah, they're open to the public mover. And so they would drive on past other bus stops, and, as I, and, they, and they're not technically allowed to do that because you're limiting it to the public mm -hmm. for the special. That's what I think is not allowed. So if we say if that's not allowed and they're not right. willing to do the wink wink anymore because now they're on the radar, right? Are you following? Mm -hmm. Then now they're going to got the hundred stops, which defeats the purpose of us getting the faster routes. Because now we're back to the takes a lot longer. I would I would take not surprisingly, I won't take a diametrically opposed view to that from a standpoint. Great, that's why you get legal that's, involved. That's exactly yeah. that's that's exactly and government right. affairs. Yeah, that's exactly right. I think we have to get a legal ruling from our legal counsel, and we have to get a legal ruling from their legal counsel. And I think we not only use our government uh, folks, our liaison folks, but I think we also use uh, my understanding our contacts with both Mr. Portman and also Mr. Brown and the administration, because I have no interest right now in thinking that the federal government in the Democratic administration or with the two senators that think CPS is one of the best districts in the state, and we hear that from them all the time, is, is, is that going to be raised by some bureaucrat somewhere after we've done this for 30 years? But I do think you're right that we need a legal rendering and I think our council has advised us that he can make the argument that it is legal and has been whether it's a wink and a blink or whether it's something has to be accommodated I cannot keep driving past Hamilton Avenue and Belmont and see at least 80 some children on a corner for just four weeks ago a car ran up onto the sidewalk it's not it's still a, a, a hindrance I'll be interested to see about our attendance of that kind of data so I, I would also suggest we get a ruling from Council, I think we go ahead and try to get this meeting because city council is going to be very interested if we're requesting a meeting and have proof and they keep putting us off. That will be very important for the people that are on city council. Um, and eventually, too, that might be have some impact with Florida as well. Um, so I think you're right. I think we need to get our liaison folks together. Never uh, mind our liaison folks represents both Florida and us. So that can be a good thing. Uh, uh, but can, I, oh, 
But let me let me finish. Yeah. So to get a ruling that way, have this meeting, be ready to appear with the data that is of interest to council and to us, um, and be ready to make that appearance before council. And then uh, I think we keep pushing for this restoration uh, to the best of our ability, or as I've been saying, restoration or refresh or you know realignment or something. So I think that we can't change our position uh, yet. And, and I think if we do all of those things we're talking about, but most importantly, we have to get ready for that city council uh, meeting and have to get both the uh, legal councils aware that we're asking about that thing. So I mean, I think we're yeah, it's, all it. So I'm not saying, you, you, I, I mean, I totally agree. You can't keep driving by that. I get it. It's just this may not be the solution to that. A, if there are drivers. B, if it's not legal. And I'm saying I just want to at least tackle the things, like any key questions that you need before you get to a solution, I think we owe an answer. Absolutely. So I, I would say let's directly write to the Secretary of Transportation, with a, the F, the FTA. If we could just write a letter, we're asking for a ruling. Here's what we have had for the past X number of years. Is there any issue with us asking our local uh, SORTA to reinstate these? We are under the under are they some are claiming this is not something they are required to do or allowed to do. Before we continue to push, we just want to make sure that we could remove that obstacle. I think that would be an appropriate step. And we should ask legal counsel if we should do that. And if we do that, then I think the legal counsel can make that sort of request. In the interim, because I'm not expecting any fast ruling by anybody that lives in Washington, D.C. Uh, or Columbus, um, but I think we, we, it's parallel tracks. I think we do all of this. You know, it would be great to have an answer like, hey, no, it's okay now. Um, so and that might be also part of the redesign and the refresh of the, of the routes, that they're not dedicated. You know, we know they're not dedicated, but in some aspects. Keep in mind, too, that part of the thing of the clouding of all of this is the fact that they're still in negotiation with drivers. Uh, and so a lot of this is about money and benefits. And second, they have drivers, maybe not enough, but they have dedicated the drivers that we once had, many of them, to their 24-7 routes. That city council has said, there's nobody on the bus. City council people said, there's nobody on those buses. It's a good commitment that you made, but right now our teenagers don't have a way. Is that not what people were saying? The, our teenagers don't have a way to school. At least many of our kids don't. The ones that need a special way most. So I think we do all of this. I think it is a full court press. Uh, it's a it's the land, sea, and air. So I think we're in agreement that we want to do everything. Uh, but right now. Uh, the time frame is such that we can, we can do certain things throughout and get a full picture. And I would reach out to, I would ask uh, Eric particularly to reach out to both Mr. Uh, Senator Brown and Senator Portman. Because remember, uh, that's why uh, Daryl couldn't meet at city council with us. He had a meeting with Mr. Brown. And sure, Brown and, and, and Mr. Portman just are at, they're adamant and enthusiastic about what CPS needs. Sir. Yeah, I, I just, I think the sooner the, the better, because mm -hmm. that is, what you should do is always remove uh, any, uh, or, or get information that may dictate whether you can go forward or not. Mm -hmm. And you setting up a project like this, I would hate to expend 50 hours in pushing, 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 and we finally get this letter like, uh, no, not gonna be allowed. And per the letter we sent, it's on our radar. We will be inspecting. Okay, that gives we we should have been thinking about something completely different. And maybe we get a copy of their letter, give it to Dan, ask him to pressure test with who sent it. Say what is it specifically stating? But they I, received a letter. I they received a letter. I just thought they had received inquiries. Oh no! I, well, I thought they received a. I thought they said we had received a letter. But it, uh, how are they were notified? I, I had in my head that they received a letter, which made me think then it's obviously got somebody's name we could track down. But I do think that has to be done sooner versus later to dictate our strategy, because I think it would be a very different strategy if what they said is true. Um, 
I still don't think, you know, we should omit still looking for the seventh and eighth graders in an interim plan, because even still, I mean, even if we could force them to do it, I mean, I think it's just such a, like the boulder to move uphill, like the sooner the better on the other stuff. So. Okay. My, my, my only point on that would be that we don't stop doing the other things we need to do. You know what I'm saying? We do it all rather than be waiting for, a, you know, a decision on that. But I think, uh, I, think, I think you have enough direction on all of that. Yes. Right. So can, can I please please, please, please do. Um, what I have here one is to clarify <laughs> to see if a letter was sent. I, I'm not <laughs> sure um, if the letter was sent. I did hear um, from Ms. Darrell that um, just getting clarification between extra rounds and medication, the difference between them. Yeah, yeah. What so, I took what he's. It either they were contacted or they received the letter, but it, it was clear to me, and I was like. So I'll follow yeah. up yeah. On, on that and then talk to our legal counsel to see if um, we can write a letter stating, can you clarify, is this in compliance of what we're, we're asking for for our students to restore those extra routes? And then I would talk to uh, Ms. Crystal Ball Boyle to um, work with Mr. Kearney in contacting uh, Portman and Brown. Great. Is that good? Yep. Which is not surprisingly, at CPS, we do it all. And we do it all. Simultaneously and, with. <laughs> and I'll, I'll let you know, I'll keep you posted on the dates. Um, I do have a request. Do you know when we are supposed to be back at council? I was trying to figure that out today. It could be, I think it's the week after this coming Monday, or because I think we were there on a Tuesday, but they normally meet on a Monday okay. or something. But I, I will check. Brian, you can't. I'll check to with uh, maybe Gerald Checo. Yeah. When would be four weeks hence? I don't know if that's three weeks or four weeks, but I. Um, and Carol I'm, will be back, so she may have already heard from them because I wasn't yeah, copied on the last be. one. I was a copy on the last one, so cool. that went directly to her last time. Um, Sounds good. But I have gotten any, I don't know how to do either. <laughs> Maybe I'll text Carol and see if she's heard. See if she's received. That would be super. And then to follow up on something else that Member Mester said about the seventh and eighth grade, I know we've talked about that. I know it's our preference eventually, in all likelihood. But uh, Sarah, I know you've said that that's uh, at least when you've done the inquiry this year. So far, there's not that possibility, but there might be somewhere along the line. Yes, um, there, we, um, OSDA consultant that we are contacting with is running an analysis right now. Um, it does look um, hopeful and, and possibly possible by second semester, um, but we are still working on an analysis, but just to let you know that um, it's in the works and um, we do um, have some possibilities that we'll be ready to present um, soon. Thank you. Uh, you know, uh, we've tried to use OSB before. I mean, we haven't tried to do it, but we've suggested that before. You know, they even have the annually or twice a year, they have the Master of Transportation degree or something uh, that comes out of OSBA. And so I'm really was very glad that you all enlisted them. I would also say when we talk about the restoration of the routes, which must be our position, uh, and is, at least it's our position of record. I don't think anything has changed from that. But when we're talking about that, it's not unreasonable to think in terms of also that we would be redesigning something else. It doesn't have to be the way it had been, but considering you know, the previous uh, addendum from last year wasn't signed and then we still are negotiating this addendum, that's another thing superintendent would probably as part of that work part on this issue is is the legal counsel and transportation figuring out what that new addendum looks like. I appreciated the letter that was sent back. I think two counsel will be interested to know that their view of the fifth year of the contract is no routes. Uh, so um, I think that would be a direction to go to because there are ways that it could be improved for all of us. And even as we look at the you know the new CPS even the way we organize ourselves. So I don't think any member of the board would turn away from other solutions or additional solutions. And I know that that kind of issue will be coming before this. 
Do we have more of the uh, transportation uh, update debrief so we know where we are that adds to what we can, we can learn, what we learned? And I guess the Cal presentation, and since then more information has been shared with some board members. So is there a, a additional piece that I know people were particularly interested in attendance, so whatever you've got to share with us, that would be great. Sure, I can give a quick update on ridership. Yeah. Um, so we did get some additional ridership data shared from Metro um, a couple of days ago. Um, when they look at the time period from um, August 16th to September 3rd, um, there now is a total of 4,400 unique students um, riding um, per day. Uh, that compares to, and, and that's PM, that was PM data, well, that's PM. and compared to a report that I had pre-COVID, that was about 5,200. I'm in the process of verifying that with Metro, though, to make sure that I'm comparing apples to apples, because there's a lot of ways to do an average, if you will. Sure. So I'm just trying to clarify that 5,200 was accurate, a good comparison to the 4,400. Um, as far as the, um, ride, the ride time, the mean ride time of, of students actually choosing to ride was 39 minutes, um, and the median was 37 minutes. The longest average um, ride time was for Schroeder and Withrow. And the shortest average ride time was uh, West High and Dater. So um, I know that Metro is taking that data, digging into the longer schools to see if there are additional adjustments they can make. Um, what we've also asked of them is similar data on ride time for all eligible students, not just the ones who are choosing to ride. Exactly. Right now, right now because so here's the we think that may, you know, if there's a big difference in the distribution, of that, um, as well as the walk time distribution for all eligible students. And so they've indicated that, that can, they can get us um, that by next week. And so that was kind of a summary of the updated data we received. That, that would be great to get that uh, summarized and then even connected with the previous so that people, so board members can see that there's been changes to the positive, to the negative. And the remaining questions that you might have, the things that we do need to follow up on, uh, and some of the claims, of course, that Metro were making was making. There was interest, and in, I'll go to Mr. Messer in just a second, but there was interest too in that Clifton route that I think Mark Saman or somebody was able to do to of the kids that are going to Walnut. What what I hear in my little neighborhood is, you know. Don't forget about the kids that you know don't have parents that can take them, or don't forget about the ones where they're you know that's getting home is an issue. So I think we want to really be very very diligent about that. Like you're saying here on the Title One schools, is it is it the fact maybe it's some of those maps? Uh, is it the people who are going to West High generally are are on the west side of town? Right. And, and the, some of the folks that are on the west side or in the central quarter are going east. So, I mean, that, that also has some impact as well. So, very concerned about Woodward, very concerned about Aiken uh, in particular, not just because I care about those, but that's where I'm hearing so many issues kind of uh, happening. Most particularly, Mr. Master, sorry to make you wait. Oh, no problem. So it looks like the comparison is like 800 students down, if that number is correct, pre-COVID to today. Um, it'd be interesting to look at that by school. Yes. Um, you know, are the are a lot of those the parents who have means, and so ridership for Walnut is significantly down. Maybe. Um, maybe Walnut is, is one that is significant. Pardon me? Walnut is one that is significantly yeah. down. And, and um, yeah, so the percentage change. Okay. changed. But, so 800, a lot of the 800 who are not taking, because um, I'm going to say, frankly, you know, we've got all that in the, the uh, messages. By and large, the people that are frustrated are walking. Now, maybe they might be more accustomed to, Writing in and, and giving feedback, 
but I would have assumed that the majority, because I think 90% of the ones that at least come to the full board, um, although I will say it has waned significantly. So um, I don't know if people are just tired of giving the feedback or if some things have gotten better. Um, I know that like one of the parents, I don't know what happened for Clifton, for example, but they're like, all of a sudden it got fixed. I don't know how many of those have taken place around that might have calmed some people down, but you know, it'd be good to say, here are the real hot spots that we still don't have resolution. It's like this part of the city with these kids, like there's a big problem here and there's a big problem here, which could then uh, more make our ask for the, the initial routes very specific based on our data. Like we know that it's these schools, it's these parts, and you at least prioritized these yesterday um, for the ones that are kind of being left out. <clears throat> I think that's a good point. I think also many of our families are used to riding the bus. So this has not been a culturally traumatic, hideous experience for them. Uh, and so they, you know, they're not in the uh, post-traumatic stress attack, but it is and it is an equity issue as to who can find an alternative route, no, no pun intended, route uh, or way to get to school versus those that, um, you know, can. So that's just something we have to kind of keep in mind. But yeah, as much data as possible. And, and actually, again, redesigning what we're doing or what they're doing is certainly part of the restoration piece. There may be some that need to be totally uh, restored. There may be some that cannot necessarily be restored, but right now our position, at least publicly, for sure, for real, for the benefit of our kids, is a restoration, not not making this change of, after, what, three decades. So that was great. Other kinds of uh, updates, uh, Metro and Yellow Bus? That, that was the um, update that I referred to. It's okay. And then, but just from a standpoint for <clears throat> yellow bus, at least in previous years, I know we've endured much worse. <laughs> uh, and, and that seems to be going well. Yeah. Is, is part of that, the treasurer updated me on some of the monies about transportation today when I had this inquiry, that I found out about this inquiry at council, because I was thinking it was just about transportation instead of everything, all COVID dollars. We helped the yellow bus people sustain themselves. Is that correct? Yes, we did agree to um, uh, pay driver wages during the time we were on distance learning, um, which contractually uh, we only had to pay 50% of our normal rate. So yes, that is true. And that came through this committee. And even when we were resisting the RFPs, we were saying that sounds like a reasonable thing. As we look at Metro, we certainly can't subsidize their salaries because right now we're going to be paying for many, many more crossing guards and whoever else from the city. But there's all kinds of ways to approach this topic. And even the recruitment of, of bus drivers, even us, you know, housing drivers, maybe not housing the buses necessarily or buying buses, but maybe the, maybe we can hire people better or what have you. So any kinds of creative because uh, that helping with their, the, the yellow bus people, I, I guess, did keep their folks in, in employed, and that's do we are we suffering? And this is something council is going to ask, I'm sure. Are the yellow bus companies having uh, the same shortages as they were having, or how have they accommodated or overcome those um, shortages? Yeah, they they are absolutely still experiencing um, driver shortages. Um, I've seen, you know, that they've implemented signing bonuses um, and increased hourly rates um, to try to counter that. Um, but I do know, as Mr. Messer said, it is a statewide problem even for all of us. Um, there's even in school districts that have had to close the schools yeah. because they did not have enough bus drivers. So um, it, it's a significant issue still. Um, they've been successful um, through um, some financial measures. Okay, and that's important to relay because at least our yellow bus service this year is better than it has been in the last few years. Is that an overstatement? That's correct. 
Okay, and that means on time and whatever. It wouldn't be a bad idea to see how that uh, uh, that problem, the same problem that Metro's having, has now been addressed through the yellow bus because that can also offer a strategy. It increases our ability to make the argument that you know Metro is making choices that are impacting our kids. It's not just the oh my oh me the sky is falling and this is the only thing we can do, which is what they told us. And that may be true, but at least the yellow bus people that aren't even full-time employees and full-time companies have been able to at least make some enough improvements, maybe with our dollar, and maybe our dollar is part of the answer. I don't know. Okay, thank you. Anything else on transportation? We all know our marching orders and whatever. Ryan, are you good? I'm good. Excellent. Uh, let's uh, move on then uh, for the uh, update, um, and let's move first then to um, oh, Jeremy. This is falling to you, huh? <laughs> oh, so sorry. Let's uh, skip Meridian for a minute and go right to the uh, enrollment uh, with uh, Assistant Superintendent Murphy, and then also then we'll go right to the geographic attendance per school. These are interrelated, and Meridian we. We can talk about more fully. So, good afternoon, everybody. You have uh, this color coded multi page document. The first two pages uh, are elementary schools, the third page uh, is our high school. I was included on the agenda to bring enrollment by building. What we've been tracking by building is uh, the projection, so where we were hoping to start with last year, uh, including the enrollment and the current no shows and the attendance, and this was as of maybe two days ago. Wow. Good. So you have this by each uh, school. I will tell you that uh, uh, just a reminder, our projection was 36,475. Nope. Our projection was 35,669. Our enrollment as of last Friday was 36,475. Uh, this past Tuesday, I believe it's okay, um, Assistant Superintendent Bunty gave us a current attendance of 34,009. Attendance? That's pretty good. Well, it's enrollment, it's, it's enrollment minus no shows. There's a 34,000. Enrollment nine. minus no shows. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Messer. So the no shows, um, that's just for my learning. Um, those are, we had their names, but they have not yet set foot in a building? Not one day. Okay, got it. In that building. They may have shown up in a different building, but okay. just have, the enrollment hasn't caught up yet. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there sounds like a gap of, what, 2,000 in there? 600. So there's 1,300 no-shows, but it's, we're down 600 from projection right now. Got it. Okay. Because it had actually was higher. I got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. We yeah. typically have seven to eight hundred no shows every Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Yeah. Just... So, and, and, and that, especially in August, and then it gets a little bit better as we move through, but that, that this is at least, is this in the average? No shows are slightly better than no shows. I don't, I'm not certain that answer. Um, I can find out. No, it's okay. But you're saying it's. Typically, so 1,300 no shows. And then we might be having trouble tracking them. Is, do we have some uh, school hopping going on? Yeah, I've heard about that. Every year. Mm -hmm. so yeah. It takes a, while, a minute for them to ke ke catch up on all the paperwork. Is there a percentage that usually that looks like on the school hopping or when they settle in on a school or they go back where they're supposed to be? Or? I don't know. Sometimes I'll <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I think for some schools it's year round. Yeah. <laughs> some schools some schools lose all year, some schools win all year. I love it. That's mm -hmm. part of the whole choice of CPS. Mr. Messer. So uh so I'm just I, I since I know my school, I always go there to kind of see mm -hmm. if that so um six oh five is that the the full like if it was fully full? Uh, I don't have capacity okay. on here. Okay. Uh, but so the, the 605 is who was enrolled in the building? So um, if you look at the next line, the reddish orange line, the projection 
is where we said uh, last winter, spring, we thought would be um, a reasonable enrollment in the building. Yeah. They came in a little higher, 605. Is what they built is their capacity. Is what they have as actually enrolled, completing the application either online or a paper document. And so me knowing that tons of people I know couldn't get their kids in there, and we have 535 out of 605, how do we account for that? That's, but some kids are absent because they're sick. It doesn't mean they're not enrolled. They're absent because they're sick, not enrolled. 535 is when they show up today. Attendance today. But... Um, <clears throat> But they're over, they're slightly over three kids, their projected enrollment. But only 535 are attending. Is that an average of? On attendance, like someone is out today. Not that so they. For example, your committee is of three people, but Miss Bates is out today. Yeah, but I'm saying so. So 535, is that attendance? As just who didn't sh who showed up yesterday, or is that an average of over time since we've been in school? Okay, so mm -hmm. on, okay, a day. You see what I mean? You, anybody follow my question? I thought the part so the no five, show is you haven't walked through the door. Nobody's walked through the door at all. But yeah. attendance, like who's showing up in there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that the it's daily seems, average attendance or the daily attendance. average attendance so far? Is it average or Friday's attendance? As of Friday, the daily average attendance for those particular buildings. Um, well, part of it is that North Avondale is considered a magnet. You know, there are caps put on things that are not necessarily put on for our uh, not so not magnets or our neighborhood schools. Is that correct? So that's part of that wait list thing that we were talking about a few weeks ago that I think Melanie was concerned about. And the complexities in the multi aging in the classroom. Yes. So you, know, you can't overly wait a certain, a certain age level in that grade span, right? For Montessori. For Montessori, right. yeah. Let me ask this. It would be good on this chart, too, then, to, or additional chart, to actually, again, have the capacity mm -hmm. of each building, which I know we have moderated and modified <laughs> we can, significantly. I can, I can okay. definitely get the capacities. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the initial capacity from the facilities master plan may not even remotely resemble the, the I mean, current. Sarah so has can we just ask, well, so just looking at Pleasant Hill Academy, so their, their enrollment is 546. So that's how many kids they have signed up in the building yeah. in that school. This says only 380 of them on average are attending. So every day there's like 100 and whatever. So like a third of their school is just out every day. Is that? Yeah. Seems like a lot. Like for reference, that, but someone showed up, so they are considered enrolled. But yes, that's correct. That's why we have this huge focus on attendance. Yeah, that's why the state has such a focus. <laughs> I, mean, I panic when our school. kids are missed like one day, like well, panic. Yes, and and I didn't. I don't think I had any clue that up to a third of a, a class a school, may just not yeah. show up for a day. That's that's why Ooh. we're doing this, and then also it is scaring our schools and our demographics, and it is also trying to figure out both the transportation piece and also school culture piece. So um, that's what I think would be an interesting add to this, then. <laughs> Not to make it too complex, but I think you could call out schools that have the highest what what's their average absenteeism. And I think yeah. some of them are pretty low, where the numbers match up a lot. But then there's some where it's like 35 percent. Whoa. Right. And, yeah. And in many instances, it'll be just like, uh, you know, what was this five years ago? Was the last time we got a report card? Let's say from each grade school, four or five years now, where unfortunately you can look at the economic disadvantage issue. And you figure out in part what the demographics are doing just because of all the additional challenges that might be there. So a lot of this is income related. I mean, even you know, Pleasant Hill is is viewed as a neighborhood school. Uh, but really well, I look like Mount Airy, they've got super high attendance. What are they doing? <laughs> you know? And I would also just exactly. want to remind um, 
that we are in a pandemic. So some of this is quarantine. Sure. Yeah, sure. You know, so it's just not necessarily. I'm getting an entire class. Ah, yeah. Right. So thank you for helping. Yeah, that's a bad year to try to figure that out. Yeah. But, yeah. And we also want to be careful as different rates of this. You know, it is part of the consideration regarding the achievement and growth and and it also leads us back to why we may want to be doing some major reorganization uh, geographically and, and returning to neighborhood and walkability and all that stuff. Um, so we're going to add the building capacity to this chart because we're going to want to follow this up next <coughs> month as well. Yeah. And then the attendance piece. Yeah, I have uh, absenteeism and yeah. the capacity. And I keep that absenteeism on a separate document than this. Okay. So now I know that the legal counsel. Oh, yeah, now, no, why no. would you why would you keep that out? I because this this is kind of a um, prominent document, so to speak, a very public document, and the absenteeism. I think you almost need an explanation. Like there has to be if you footnoted it, I'd be okay with yeah. it. Yeah, I just like, think like in the spirit it, of open and real, oh, all you have to do is subtract. Then make a percent or divide. I mean, mm -hmm. so it's there. If it was something that, but I, yeah, you know, I think put a footnote of lots of factors impact this. Da, 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 da. I'll be happy with footnotes. But I just I, think that that needs to be explained yeah. a lot more than this stuff does. For example, even may even need a footnote to explain. Well, I'd almost just put a box in here and say enrollment number of children signed up within the school, like a key for these words projected. Oh, you want the, a definition for each? I almost think that would be helpful. Yeah. Okay. Is this going to be a This is the number when during planning. We're going to be following this document as we go. Yeah. All right. But yes, I mean you can put the attendance thing, but I just I worry about that because that's a it needs to be clarified because it will be holding certain schools I think really at disadvantage. But that's great. Anything else on enrollment? I know the general counsel is not that worried about that um, the sixty percent occupancy piece. But my my and I know we have a difference maybe of opinion as to what that actually means, whether it's people or, or children or, or space. So a few of my friends that are other board members elsewhere are actually kind of worrying about it. Is, I think we already gave this assignment at the we Cal, perhaps, as to what it means. Is it people or is it, is it enrollment or is it uh, space? Not that I'm that worried about the charter people being able to buy it, but the charter folks are on the move in Ohio big time, financially and, and uh, uh, governmentally. So I would worry about that. And I think that should also impact our growth. I mean, if we have tradition, we have perpetually under-enrolled schools, we have to try to figure out why. And I know when we designed the facilities master plan, there were an awful lot more children in the in the community of Avondale than there are now. There's been tremendous, tremendous exit, not by not necessarily by choice, but by yeah. all other reasons yeah. too. So I think it's been more than a decade. It's been 15 years, actually, when those, some of those projections are being made. Every bit of it. We're getting old. Yeah, you can. Yeah, it happens. Here's the other implication that enrollment is different than prior years. Yeah. Um, and I'm not pouting. My hands are freezing. But, um, <laughs> I thought you were mad. No, my hands are freezing. <laughs> um, the new funding formula has an impact. It, this year's enrollment dirt t affects this year's revenue. Or in the past, it was a three-year average, up or down. And so changes were slow to hit us. But um, if we don't meet our enrollment targets, then our revenues will go down, and then our budget's going to have to go down. We can't overspend our budget. So that's um, just sharing that as often as I can to educate people. And you have, we've been educated, and that's one of the reasons we're dwelling on this right now, because <laughs> it's also our third year in our strategic plan. At least one of the five items on our strategic plan is growth. 
and it's now a, it's a necessity as much as it is also a, a you know a great goal. So yes, that would be that would be important to them, and that's why it's in finance. Anything else, Mr. Messer, before nope. we move on? Okay, Jerry, you're up. <laughs> So our bridge maker. That tells last the conversation we were having. On your desk, you should have a blue folder. I do. Inside that, you will find the latest red dot map. Uh, that does include the elementary on the left, all the high schools and Cape on the right. But there is an important point of clarity with saying the latest red dot map. That uh, as we were talking about, we're still finishing as we speak the no show <laughs> yeah. uh, list and the normal enrollment transition. So this is still based on last year's enrollment, but it shows the distribution of those enrollments by school. Um, and then we will be getting the new generation of the data and geocoding all the students for this year, uh, pretty much as we speak. Uh, it should be ready around the normal time of mid, uh, mid November, uh, mid November. Then we'll be generating the this year's enrollment red dots. Um, treasurer. It would be fascinating to see how the absenteeism rate is overlaid on this map. So, like, is the geographic distance from the school mm -hmm. have a high correlation to that? Yeah, I would argue <clears> that it does. And I wonder, such a fortune transport <laughs> these kids. Yes, Mr. Messer. Yeah, you know, we had that parent uh, who wrote to the board. Oh yeah. Um, well, this was a nice parent. And she said, we love Gamble. No, she said they love it. Oh, okay. Uh, a different parent. Uh, at the same time, she said, the problem is, like, we're struggling with, do we just drive them? Because it's, you know, that coming from Mount Washington. <laughs> it's a, this is the parent you've been talking about. To get over here. Well, look, there's only two all the way, I mean, from this whole corner. Those two, look how far they have to go before there's any other kids in there to pick up. Are you talking about Gamble Elementary or High School? High School. Um, so the, it's like whatever many pages this is. But anyway, I'm just looking at these only two yellow, two pink dots. Let me just squeeze those two over here to, because she's like, we didn't get into Clark. But then I look over at Clark and the one parent. She's coming from all the way to Mount Airy, all over here, and she's on an island. We just so can't do it. it's, I, I think it's, uh, to me, that's one of the best examples of, you know, kind of the, the insanity of what we're being asked to do. I mean, how can you build a transportation that matrix with that level of complexity? It's just when you're trying to get two kids alone all the way at least to the grass, and then it's just so interesting. Encouraging to see, I think now that I'm trusting my 70 year old memory here, but even these elementaries, these elementaries look a little bit more consolidated than they were, what would it have been, six years ago or seven years ago? They look a little bit more, it seems like there's less spread if you're looking at a neighborhood school than, I, than it, there used to be. Thank God for cans. That took care of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And and I know it's expensive, Jeremy, but, but we can maybe have the superintendent beat up the treasurer for this. But I like those big maps for the board to see because without that, without that sledgehammer or two by four getting right there, the forehead, the board will not see this. Yeah, we were planning. Yeah, we were planning with the new ones since these were last year. We wanted to keep it minimal, but with the new ones, we were planning on doing the larger boards that we're using. And you won't be surprised to know that archiving will leave. I don't think that's a word. I have all the old ones in my office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't help myself. But that would be great to even. You know, old versus new. This is this is singularly the best teaching tool for this school board that I've visual experienced. Pictures, yeah. Yeah, this is it. You, know, the, the, you have to do all the finance stuff visually. You have to make all these charts and things for academics and health. And you know, I yeah, I love my kids go to school. 
I would not be painting North Avondale if I was this family out of 275. Exactly. They're probably an employee's kid. Well, what about this one down on Rapid Run? <laughs> Same thing. And what about this one right in Westwood? Yeah. And this one in Cheviot? Yeah, I mean, Cheviot is it's crazy. I had no idea about it. Just the edits dressed to no wonder they're so best, mad when to. they're pulling in, cut people right. off. They've been driving for two hours. <laughs> now you're balancing the philosophical school of choice methodology yeah. with the financing. That's right. Well, yeah. guess what? I'm, I'm uh, a school of choice is just great for so many things, but also a huge believer. In and uh, when we when we talk about the high schools. Um, I think that there are, the, interestingly enough, the ones in the high schools in the central quarter um, can be citywide because their career or particular instruction, that's all part of this Meridian thing. But boy, I think you make West High, and it almost is, West High and Dater are the two neighborhood west, western side high schools. Program with there need to be the east side neighborhood high schools. And we, I mean, I know that that's, that's the direction we're going to go. We can't keep affording to do this. And if you take, so what I did. What'd you do? I took this report, went to Mount Airy. And if you look how Mount Airy, for the attendance. Yeah. You said, wow, Mount Airy yeah. is great with attendance. Well, if you look at their map, all of the kids are uh, basically in the neighborhood. Oh, what a great insight there. <laughs> that's so <laughs> Potentially a strategy for attendance. They, they also <laughs> so, have a great principal. They mm -hmm. also have a great. There's many reasons, but just that whole rain corridor, right? And it's bringing all those kids from those big apartment complexes up. Mm -hmm. Now, Mount Airy is a mixed neighborhood, and you can't tell by looking at the client's mm -hmm. house and all the buildings. So that's another big mm -hmm. issue to address. But Look at like the superintendent has said, you can't get the, you can't teach them if you can't get them in there. So this helps. Sir, go ahead. Yeah, I also wonder how much is just um, a lack of awareness of the options and where they're located, et cetera. Like, do we? Is there a way for somebody to actually see when they pick what schools they want to be, you know, considered for? Like, does it? Tell them if you make this school, it's this much distance or whatever. Oh, yeah, they, they do. It's on the. Um, they know that, but the, the kicker, I believe, is they're providing the transportation. So yeah. Well, the reason I asked to is take advantage. Um, they take advantage of the transportation. So it's for them in their daily lives. Okay, at least the transportation is taken care of. But if you have to drive your kid yourself. I think it will be. Is Parker Woods is Parker Woods magnet? Yeah. yeah. So I think that's a great example of um, I don't know. I know our school. I I was told there's a lot of similarity between those two schools. Do you agree with that, North Avondale and Parker Woods? They're some more diverse than some of our other neighborhood schools. Other Montessori. Yeah. Um, and so. Mm -hmm. As I'm looking at kind of comparing those two, like why would you go, you know, if Parker Woods is here, why would you pass that and just keep on going if it's there? Well, one of Lillian's friends, um, I, I asked, you know, they're in the backyard. Well, why did you go there? We wanted Montessori. Oh. So, uh, Parker Woods is Montessori. Sorry, no, I don't think so. No, I think you're wrong. No. <laughs> she might be up there. And I'm like, what does it, you know? And just knowing that our principal came there, and I asked you one time, like, they're pretty comparable schools. So anyway, my point is, sometimes I think it's awareness, um, and sometimes I think they make choices to the point of just being able to make choice, like the family at the beginning of the school year when I said, oh, which school? Thinking they were going to say North Avondale. Rockdale or one of those, and they said they were going to Riverview East, and they lived three blocks from us. <laughs> I was like, what? Okay. Well, my sister's kids go there, so we thought that'd be a fun you know, way to keep them together. Um, so, and it's not an easy trip from there, even though it's not really that. As, as we start to make these changes that we're going to have to make, 
in order to facilitate the change. We're going to have to agree that families, students that are currently there and the families that are currently somewhere are going to have to be able to remain. They're going to have to be grandfathered or there'll be such tumult that, that there's no, we, won't, we won't be able to do it. So we started the conversation with uh, Gamble and Clark this week. Well, actually Good. with the principals last week. We had a parent meeting last night. And so far, so good. It's been, I don't know if you've heard anything, but so far, so good. They seem to be receiving it well. Yeah, good. Yeah, fine. So are we going to kind of blend into the Meridian plan? Yes. Please. And I don't want to, I don't know what, I'm sure you all have worked really hard on building the plan you're going to talk about today. My only question is, I think one good thing and you probably have already done this too, but putting together a charter or showing us a charter that we can then, and I, I'd see like the administration saying, hey, here's our charter. What we've heard from the board is this is what you like us to solve um, and have it on the charter. Like um, here's what's in scope, here's what's out of scope. Um, here's the timeline, here are the milestones, and which would include, and I think lots of people have heard bits and pieces and I'm afraid to say anything because I don't even know really exactly kind of where we are. And I think with that kind of conversation, we asked that, remember, at the Cal? Mm -hmm. People are like, does that mean this is all, all up and running? So I think the sooner the administration can put a charter up, like who will be on the committee? Are we going to have some parents on there? Are we going to have some staff? Are we going to have whatever? So they can see like, okay, I see what's coming. I can breathe. There's going to be people at the table. Okay. Because I do think some people are kind of like, what? So what, and this is for me, and now I'm in the seat. Yeah. It's really um, under, the, the Meridian plan started as a transportation. So the only thing that administration has been working on, um, the superintendent before me, myself right now, is dealing with the transportation. We have not met or did anything for the other pieces yeah. because if you start going east and west, it's an equity issue. There's programming on one side of the district that is not on the other. Yeah. So for us uh, in PLT, and we discussed this as a whole, uh, that should all fall under strategic planning uh, yeah. um, and, and, and looking at that full piece. Our attention really was around the operational. That's why it landed in Sarah and now Jeremy's lap. We were just looking at the transportation of the cost issue of that. So not a full blown plan because that affects programming. That is a lot of um, engagement when you start changing uh, boundaries. So just kind of a full plan and how we want to address it through the strategic plan, especially that we're in our Third year. Yeah, and so I, I mean, I think it's it's wise to look at the transportation side because it it starts to give you the why. But then I think there's not a whole lot you can do to change the transportation until you have what it's all going to ladder into, right? And so um, because when you go through the work where you have disparities, you might say, hey, for these areas, we will continue to have choice because there is only one option for these areas. Is it the change? I'm only guessing. I probably won't be here when that's all decided. Um, but I think the sooner it could at least the work start to be scoped, mm -hmm. kind of timeline, mm -hmm. it'll allow people to kind of understand, you know, people just want to know what to expect. Right. And right now I'm hearing a lot of, well, I heard my kids not going to be able to go to this school. I'm like, nothing's been officially decided right. yet. Exactly. So, but I think hearing bits and pieces of our meeting, people are trying to stitch it together. Correct. Well, what, well, what school would this be in? I'm like, we're not even at that level of depth. Oh, right. But I think letting the letting the public know we're not. That you know, but here's kind of the plan. And I think getting everything into a charter would be one way to just say, this is a body of work. That could be a little exercise. Exactly. Um, I think that would be a helpful uh, sooner versus later discussion publicly so people know where we are. We're right now in the sooner. Which is why we're going to do it this way today to get it all out there. Um, take a take one of these is and this, do a little map. It's the same thing I gave you at a board meeting a couple of. Times but ago. is this 
Who is it? This is the administration. Now this yeah. is this is a comp uh, how shall I say it? Compilation, and I think as we read through it, this stuff, this first sheet, that's that's me. The second sheet that starts to be color coded, this I think is a compilation of what's been being done versus what could be done or what might be a good suggestion. So, so can I? Sure. Can I, I? I think we have to pause this because a. I don't think it could be anywhere, it should be anywhere that the board is one off coming up with different plans and could no, be competing. No, no. You'll see this is a and what I would say is what I'd say is like we gotta get the charter. You know what I mean by charter, which is here's the problem to be solved, here's right. how we'll approach it, these are the resources needed, this is the, the milestones ahead, and what you can expect. I'm comfortable with each, each board member wanting to give thoughts and input. But I think this has to be an administration Absolutely. doing the math and the whole bit. And you'll see a lot of this is. Right, but I'm just saying we haven't even done a charter yet. We haven't even aligned what's in scope, out of scope. We don't know who's on the team. We can do that next month. Yeah, when but I, but I think that has to be in place first okay. or this is like task before the plan. So this here is from, this is not from uh, Sarah. This, is this your work here? No. no. Okay. As we go through this, let's okay. look at it because there's been a lot, a lot of understanding and clarity and communication to Ryan's point about all of this. And that's why we've tried to color code it to make some sense. The first one that talks in terms of justifications, that's me, what I wrote in order to talk to the young activists. About believe what? it or not. Because they heard about the East West. And they wrote me a letter and they said, uh, you know, they would have worries about everybody on the West is this, everybody on the East. So that's just the justification for, for pursuing it. But if you can look at this, give it some time because you can then fit it in. But this is not starting now. It started a few years ago in reality. And some things are accomplished. Some things are not accomplished. Some things were agreed to and then not implemented. So what I've tried to do here is create a compilation of where we've been and some of the things that probably need to be addressed, which is why we asked for these maps, why we've asked for, you know, that you were dealing with the transportation problem. But I would just like to give this 15 minutes at the end of this meeting so that there is at least some understanding on the full committee as to what this how this has evolved, but yeah. So I, I, my, I'm very uncomfortable with that until we get the charter, because I think we have to get the full board aligned to what it is we're solving and do that publicly. Now I don't disagree that there have been some things done in the past to set us up for this, yeah. but I wouldn't say that we've started the Meridian plan before we told the public. You know what I mean? So I think what you can say is the, the or what we can say. The district has made some deliberate decisions, yeah. which has allowed us today to, to begin the process of building a plan. This is going to be transformative. Just, you know, there are some people I, I already know who have started to chatter, and it's on, I'm sure you've seen some of the Facebook parent yeah. groups, they're hearing about it. And I've said, you know, when I've asked if I know, no, 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 this is, we've talked about it. We're, there's, you, you're not expecting something to happen tomorrow. I believe we have to start with the charter. Um, maybe the administration could present it here first of what that body of work could look like. But I think then we should take it to the full board to say everybody agreed to this. Because well, nobody's agreed to anything. No, no, no. I'm saying take it to the full board to say everybody agreed to the charter. So you can say now. Administration go off and do the work and you're come back and bless the charter. Pardon me? You're, you're saying the board will bless the charter. Yeah. You know, well, the board would act as this, you know, and project management would serve as the sponsors to high level guide, but the work, this is clearly administration work. So Absolutely. once it comes to the board to be blessed as sponsors and everybody's like, yep, we're all aligned. Yes, the resources are there. Yes, these are the right milestones. Yes, this is the problem we're solving. Yes, these are the right people on the board. Because you might you might say, hey, we think it should be this a steering committee of this group of X. 
Well, some of the boards feel like, gosh, I'd really make sure somebody from blank was on that committee. Great. We can have them on the steering committee or they can be on the a subcommittee. But once you get that all set up, then I think it's like the district needs to go do the work and then present to us something um, uh, in those meetings along the way to meet those milestones. So everybody's brought along and obviously very deliberately putting in the uh, engagement process. I would even say, um, so for instance, this was created because there was a clear philosophy of the district. Choice was important. Yeah. Choice. So that's why we have magnets. That's why um, high schools, there's no really, you can select, right? Um, so the question is, what is our new vision? What is our new mission? And then from that, you can build your charter. You can build your action steps. But if, if it's still, a, if the vision and mission, because we, we tell very loudly, we are a district of choice. Sure, yeah. So Well, and then part two, I think this is the time when this is done, this question about neighborhood and magnet. I, I think you hit it right there, too. Well, the history of the magnet schools was not choice. It was about racial balance. Well, that's yeah. Right. yeah, that's magnet. But we took that <laughs> philosophy yeah. around equity and, and then built upon it. We mm -hmm. saw some things, and now it's, it's really kind of um, our brand. And so, oh, sorry, one more question. Yeah, go ahead, because so, I'm going to respond. What's that? Go ahead, because I'll, I'll respond. Yeah, what um, this is about. I think the only other piece is, like, I'd hate to wait till we get a new superintendent to start, but I know there were some people at least that thought, you know, in at least some of our previous conversations, oh, so is this big enough that we can do this before a new superintendent? So, so we can just keep rolling on this one. No, what I'm saying is, it's, 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 this is something that will not take two months to do, right? If, if you're looking to get a superintendent by December, this is not going to be completed in two months. Yeah. It's going to take years. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Oh, I yeah. thought you said it wasn't going to be too much to do. And I'm like, no, no, no two months. Two months. Yeah. 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 Let me be very clear. So are you saying it's good to get the work started because they'll be able to get engaged or wait? I would say wait. Yeah. That's just my opinion, but um, as chair, if I can start with the response by looking at the document that is before you, if you only look at the gray stuff, those are things that have been done already under the leadership of the previous superintendent. So if you just look at the gray, if you then look at, uh, as we say, the, you know, looking in terms of the green to be ready to be done, yellow is discussion is needed, obviously, and pink is something new. That, that is the one individual thing besides the uh, response to the Young activists. The Meridian plan, the term Meridian is evolved because people were talking about hemispheres. And the social studies teacher and me had to say, stop, you're, you're really talking about meridians on the on a, on a uh, globe. Because you're talking north-south, you're not talking east-west. In previous years, the district's been divided into to quadrants and to hemispheres, and what the meridian plan was is that a number of us over a series uh, several years have been talking about three sections of the district one east and one west and then one central quarter the central quarter concept is a relatively new concept but ironically and strangely enough We've almost organized ourselves around that, in part because this, the you know I-75 isn't a very natural uh, dividing line in the first place. But if you look at what's gray, and then you look in terms of uh, how shall we say it, um, 
we've made strategic decisions along the way that are already in place. You guys are working on the one now about IB, uh, which has been placed over there and developing on the west side. Have or at least the previous uh, superintendent, I think once at least since then, we've also said that we want to have that on the east side. Either could be AMI and AWL, and you'd be choosing Withrow versus uh, 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 Schroeder, and you have to decide, like you have to decide about what West High versus Dave program. Uh, we did the expense of buying uh, Mercy so that there was an equivalent to Clark on the west side. We invented the, over the period of time, uh, while I think Laura was still deputy, uh, we invented this uh, idea that we had to make our neighborhood schools, and we all acquiesced and agreed, more attractive. So that was Vision 2020. So the idea that we are starting something is the concept or the frame of mind that we have to divorce ourselves from. This has been going on even before our strategic plan. And there's been action taken. There have been issues to overcome, be they transportation and the cost of choice, but be they the fact that where we have our greatest diversity, with the exception, I think, of one of our Montessori schools, where we have the greatest diversity in our schools is in our Montessori schools. We're in the process now, and, and, and for years, Melanie Bates has been saying you're going to need a third Montessori high school. So this isn't the beginning start. This isn't the, the start of something, and we can call it whatever we want. But the, the start began years ago, and it includes even going back as far as, as um, um, conceptually changing part of our brand to the My Tomorrow concept about college and career and collaboration. So, and now with the expanse of career ed, this is also part of it. So the first thing I want to dispel is that this is something that hasn't been going on or that it has only been driven by a few board members, like let's say O.C. Davis, who is very committed to having neighborhood high schools. Well, we can't really do that. Have every one of our neighbor, every one of our high schools be a neighborhood high school. We can't do it. In part because there are certain high schools that are particularly organized in a way around particular instruction or particular careers. And thankfully, for the most part, they're in the central quarter. So those could remain as citywide versus the ones that are over on the west side or over on the east side. There's ways of looking at this, but the first thing I want to dispel is to think that everybody's been doing something over these last several years and didn't know what they were doing. It just kind of worked out. I mean, I think there's been great effort to, to invent both the Vision 2020 in our neighborhood schools, the idea of expanding careers, uh, availability, and, and access in all of our high schools. I think there's been great effort to figure out this transportation elephant that we have gotten ourselves into that we cannot get out of, and now we've reached crisis situation because of our vendor. So I don't. I, I want to dispel the idea that something's starting now, because it belies the work that's been done by so many people over a number of years with, with some degree of vision. I mean, that's one of the reasons, in part, in the strategic plan that one of the five things was growth. We wanted to figure out how to grow. And, and there are certain problems to overcome. We don't know what to do about Spencer's upper grades. We don't know what to do about Chiviet's uh, uh, upper grades for their gifted programs over at Chiviet. But when we said we're gonna have a Envision 2020, when they, we were fixing the, the elementaries and the, and, and the administration invented all these things, went out to the schools, figured out what kinds of things would be of attraction to the neighborhoods and the schools. The curious thing was that um, we decided also to use that when Walnut didn't want that building, I guess the old Douglas or whatever it is where Spencer is now, we immediately said that we got a place for Spencer. But once you get a place for Spencer, at least the early grades, what are you going to do about the west side? And that's when we put uh, y'all, the district, the board, the administration, put the gifted program in Chiviet. 
and help save Shibi. It's like we don't, we haven't just been doing this hodgepodge, happy go lucky thing. And some of this, when we created, you know, as a district, we knew we had to do something about cans in the Clifton neighborhood and the needs of, because of the Fairview, the, the Fairview problem of people being out in the yard and staying over and that equity issue that, uh, you know, Melanie was so concerned about. Well, created a neighborhood school. We went through that controversy. Ryan's been there for that, the art folks and what have you. But what we then decided is we wanted to do it as a real neighborhood school. If you really did it as a neighborhood school, and this all went through student achievement. This is still when Bill Miles was still in the district, went through student achievement, and he realized that if you changed hands, you could then have neighborhood schools, actual neighborhood schools, going up the central corridor in the north. That would impact uh, certainly our Winton Hills folks, certainly our College Hill folks, our Mount Airy folks, and our north side folks. So, but I just wanted to spell that something is starting. What, what, what is happening is we have found a way to, uh, to make some really big decisions with the administration trying to address, to Ryan's point, the failure or the unattractiveness, perceived unattractiveness, of our neighborhood schools. Not having a, a dual school system that's magnet and neighborhood keeping some degree of choice and expansion in our high schools, and yet addressing the fact that you can't be transporting all these kids wherever they want to go. So I, I just would like you to review this, look at this. I think Ryan's right that we would, it would behoove us in part of our retreat, very frankly, but also most of that has to be used for the superintendent search, I'm sure. But it would behoove us in our, in our retreat to figure out what are the problems we're trying to overcome. I think that's a great place to start. And, and what are we trying to address for the future? And we did that in part with the strategic plan, but now looking farther into the future, extending the strategic plan beyond the three years. Uh, it, it, and that, could, that charter could evolve as a result of the, of the uh, retreat approach. It could do that. So let's, let's think about that retreat as that being one of the topics. Thanks. To get yeah, here we go. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> get another eleven to zero. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. So if you'll review this document, if you'll try to put in the historic, I'm sorry, but I'm a social studies teacher and I love maps and I love historical frame of reference. And then it makes a lot of what we've been doing is even more sensible. Can I just have one clarifying Yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to make like the pink or these. Yeah, just, more, the, I'm, I love the color code. So are we saying these are the things that Laura has agreed to? Because some of these things we. Here's, a, here's No, no. These right. are not, not all the things. No. The, okay. The, the pink, the one that I can, I don't know. If, let's go through. Most of the pink are just crazy board ideas, individual board. Okay, that's not what I was going to say. Okay. But like, let's say the a uh, good example would be uh, uh, Madisonville Jumpy Parker, mm -hmm. using both of those buildings to be a K-8 uh, or PK-8, um, the lighthouse one. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you very much. Um, and, and the existing, you know, that's been a struggle out there. And I know that we've had several meetings out in Madisonville, especially when we found out that the, uh, the uh, Charter school was buying that property that we would have sort of been interested in, but knew we couldn't afford it. There wasn't a need to it. Then you merge those two buildings into a, a PK uh, uh, eight. She had thought that that was something she had thought would be a good idea, just like the IB on west and east, which I know you picked up that on. But the yeah. uh, the other, let's see some of the other pink. But I wouldn't want to focus on the pink as much. That's sort of just that's why it's pink. Um, kind of have fun. Um, the parking lot, central, getting rid of some of the costs. This was something that was mentioned, I think, in some of the budget discussion. Jacob Center, we know we have to do something with that from a standpoint of ripping it down or, or rebuilding it or whatever is part of our property that we have some use for. There's property that needs to, that we could be selling. And you need to go through. Right? Well, that's coming. Well, that's, well, that's, 
So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't So these that. are not like in stone. That's what None I'm of this is. Okay. Except what okay. we've already done. Okay. But, but, great. I, but, but it's so important okay. to me, and I think to everybody else that the work that's been done is honored and move forward. So and like so when I'm looking at it, I'm looking at the gray. So it says in the gray area, already are done and doing. So yeah. moving that stuff forward, whether it's the um, transportation piece and those types of things. Yeah, I mean, but okay. I just done, need clarity on if these are things that was already agreed to, um, but it's different layers. Some different of these, yeah, sections. the gray has been done. Or Okay. That, that would be the IB on the side are doing. Um, the 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 green is ready to be done, and there's some stuff that was agreed to and then not implemented. I'll give the best example of that is with the result of cans um, not making we made that according to the neighborhood boundaries that are accepted by the city and the uh, community uh, whatever the, the neighborhood mm -hmm. associations are. So that was crucial but then we could have and should have and we even went and we had the meetings with the Witten Terrace folks and Finlander Garden folks they never quite understood why they were getting on a bus and going to Pleasant Hill and walking past their own school because they have a they have a parent transportation problem and and, and I think it uh, really hit the issue I remember one of our buses got uh, was in a car wreck coming down Winton if I recall, that they were dropping off the kids from Linton Terrace. Those communities have been reached out to, or even as a college hill person, me finding out that people in the administration and the district thought that Belmont Avenue was Mount Eric because the you know the the, um, the, the college hill neighborhood boundaries. Yeah, it's, it starts to be taken away at the, on the west side of, of Hamilton. People consider that being Mount Air because of the attendance boundaries. Well, many of these many of these neighborhoods too, and this is the issue we have to overcome that is going to be worse than figuring out who's happy or not happy or how to do the transition. Although grandfathering takes care of a lot of problems. On the west side, part of our overcrowdedness is the boundary lines. Mm -hmm. That, and that's been, and I'm still mad at Mary Ronan for not fixing that on her way out, because she could have, as a West Sider, helped fix that. You know, that, but that's, that, like you said, that's a can of worms to open that up. But the, the, the issue for, for me is that there are so many neighborhoods in this town that are very diverse neighborhoods. And our schools are not. It's not right. It's not reflected. By that's the, the issue. Okay. So how do you approach that? So that's going to be on that. He wants to call it a charter. What do we have to overcome? We have segregated schools where we don't have segregated neighborhoods. And that's an issue. The transportation thing is an issue. Keeping some level of choice, some capacity to grow, divesting ourselves of stuff we don't need. Yes. I mean, we need to sell property. I, I mean, I totally buy what Ryan is saying, but I also want to get done because it gives us a platform to move on, and some of it can be accelerated mm -hmm. if we, you know, come to grips with it. But that's why I wanted to share this. But yeah, that first list is totally me. That's me responding to the young when I still like them. No, that was helpful. Helpful, especially <laughs> in the areas. Um, see, I just thought transportation because that's what no, we were really. Started. Like, how do we do this? But if we're talking from finances to segregated schools and all of that, it's bigger. The point and is super well taken because the, re the reality of the transportation, mm -hmm. the big T, was the thing that lit the fire. There's no question okay. because okay. it's just been such a mess. And not just recently, but over time. Right. And, right. and $50 million that we don't have. Right. It's, it's just, it's just a. So yeah, I'm, uh, and that's why I wanted to get this. There's been this piece, that piece, this piece. I wanted to use this opportunity to at least get it out ah, there. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. So the other uh, thing that we have to worry about is next month, what needs to be discussed? Because I think we just did all of our stuff we had to do. Um, uh, we're going to get our big maps. Well, maybe, maybe not by next month. Yeah, probably not my next one. Damn. Maybe one more. Okay. <laughs> Takes a lot of time to generate all that. 
Just, yeah, I bet it does, and it's a fortune. It's a fortune. I'll tell you. Bill, do you have the work plan in front of you? <coughs> I didn't bring it either. I didn't bring it either. People always make fun of me. I bring all my papers, and that's today I didn't bring them. No, I'm not going to get it. But um, I need to, I was going to. We have to have Brenda. Yes. That's important. Are there time sensitive stuff that the administration would have in October? That that's the attendance thing, but they don't do that anymore in October. No. Um, yeah, I'm drawing a blank because I was so focused on November and the five year forecast on how to play that. I was going to call you tomorrow to schedule all those activities out. Yeah. Should we? Should some some of that happen on, in October? I can't. Okay. Cool. That's why so, we're talking about it. Um. But when I call you, I'll have the work plan in front of us and my, my right. notes on the things that we pushed into the future. Right. We could do that. Is that okay? Or can we do that? Absolutely. Tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. And Phil keeps a good list of that stuff too. So Phil, send that. And I also from... was going to call you about the board pay. Have a... Oh yeah. What about some money? <laughs> um, so I'll include that in my conversation tomorrow. That's okay. That'd be great. Okay. And nothing in particular. We're, we're going to keep working on growth. Because I know that uh, Mrs. Bates is very determined about it, and more particularly, that I don't know that Nick will get that updated chart sure. for enrollment. And then, Jeremy, will you have more stuff? I mean, I love <laughs> this. It is. It's telling you. It's a lot of. Well, yeah, the finance committee, I think it's October 18th. So, October 15th is usually the enrollment extract. You might be able to. Well, that could do it. Preliminary. As long, yeah, just not label it draft. I'm also on vacation at that point. Oh, so. okay. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Finance committee. October 15th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh my God, I'm in heaven. It's great. So I would frame them. Yeah. Oh yes. I'll have to. I'll, I'll, I'll be rude and bring it in so you can yeah, see it. It's just it. remarkable. Well, thank you all for a great meeting. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You have the diversity of the board between Ryan and me.